Anion gap. The anion gap is the difference in the measured cations and the measured anions in serum, plasma, or urine. The magnitude of this difference in the serum is often calculated in medicine when attempting to identify the cause of metabolic acidosis, a lower than normal pH in the blood. If the gap is greater than normal, then high anion gap metabolic acidosis is diagnosed. The term anion gap usually implies serum anion gap, but the urine anion gap is also a clinically useful measure. Calculation The concentrations are expressed in units of molar equivalents liter, mkl, or in millimoles liter, mlL. With potassium the anion gap is calculated by subtracting the serum concentrations of chloride and bicarbonate, anions, from the concentrations of sodium and potassium, cations. Without potassium daily practice Emission of potassium has become widely accepted, as potassium concentrations, being very low, usually have little effect on the calculated gap. This leaves the following equation. Uses Anion gap is an artificial and calculated measure that is representative of the unmeasured ions in plasma or serum. Serum levels are used more often in clinical practice. Commonly measured cations include sodium, Na, potassium, K, calcium, Ka2, and magnesium, Mg2. Cations that are generally considered unmeasured include a few normally occurring serum proteins and some pathological proteins, for example, paraproteins found in multiple myeloma. Likewise, commonly measured anions include chloride, Cl, bicarbonate, HCO3, and phosphate, PO4. 3, while commonly unmeasured anions include sulfates and a number of serum proteins. By definition, only Na+, Cl, and HCO3 plus slash K plus are used when calculating the anion gap. In normal health there are more measurable cations compared to measurable anions in the serum. Therefore, the anion gap is usually positive. Because we know that plasma is electroneutral, uncharged, we can conclude that the anion gap calculation represents the concentration of unmeasured anions. The anion gap varies in response to changes in the concentrations of the above-mentioned serum components that contribute to the acid-base balance. Calculating the anion gap is clinically useful, as it helps in the differential diagnosis of a number of disease states. Normal value ranges Modern analyzers use ion-selective electrodes which give a normal anion gap as less than 11 mkL. Therefore, According to the new classification system, a high anion gap is anything above 11 mkL and a normal anion gap is often defined as being within the prediction interval of 3 to 11 mkL, with an average estimated at 6 mkL. In the past, methods for the measurement of the anion gap consisted of colorimetry fund as well as flame photometry fund. Thus normal reference values ranged from 8 to 16 mkL plasma when not including and from 10 to 20 mkL plasma when including. Some specific sources use 15 and 8 to 16 mkL. A reference range provided by the particular lab that performs the testing should be used to determine if the anion gap is outside of the normal range. A proportion of normal individuals may have values outside of the normal range provided by any lab. Interpretation and causes Anion gap can be classified as either high, normal or, in rare cases, low. Laboratory errors need to be ruled out whenever anion gap calculations lead to results that do not fit the clinical picture. Methods used to determine the concentrations of some of the ions used to calculate the anion gap may be susceptible to very specific errors. For example, if the blood sample is not processed immediately after it is collected, continued cellular metabolism by leukocytes, also known as white blood cells, may result in an increase in the HCO3 concentration, and result in a corresponding mild reduction in the anion gap. In many situations, alterations in renal function, even if mild, for example, as that caused by dehydration in a patient with diarrhea, 
may modify the anion gap that may be expected to arise in a particular pathological condition. A high anion gap indicates that there are, usually due to disease, elevated levels of anions like lactate, beta-hydroxybutyrate and astocetate, PO43, and SO42. These anions are not part of the anion gap calculation and therefore a high anion gap results. There is a secondary loss of HCO3, which is a buffer, without a concurrent increase in Cl. Electroneutrality is therefore maintained. Thus, the presence of a high anion gap should result in a search for conditions that lead to an excess of these anions. High anion gap The anion gap is affected by changes in unmeasured ions. A high anion gap indicates acidosis. In uncontrolled diabetes, there is an increase in ketosids due to metabolism of ketones. Ketosids are unmeasured anions, so there is a resulting increase in the anion gap. In these conditions, bicarbonate concentrations decrease, in response to the need to buffer the increased presence of acids, as a result of the underlying condition. The bicarbonate is consumed by the unmeasured cation, H+, via its action as a buffer, resulting in a high anion gap. Lactic acidosis, ketosidosis, diabetic ketosidosis, alcohol abuse, diabetic ketosidosis, alcohol abuse, toxins. Methanol, ethylene glycol, propylene glycol, lactic acid, uremia, aspirin, venformin, iron, isoniazid, cyanide, coupled with elevated venous oxygenation, methanol, ethylene glycol, propylene glycol, lactic acid, uremia, aspirin, venformin, iron, isoniazid, cyanide, coupled with elevated venous oxygenation, renal failure causes high anion gap acidosis by decreased acid excretion and decreased HCO3. Reabsorption Accumulation of sulfates, phosphates, urate, and hippurate accounts for the high anion gap. Note, the classic mnemonic physicians used to remember the causes of anion gap metabolic acidosis is mud peels, methanol, uremia, diabetic ketosidosis, propylene glycol, isoniazid, lactic acidosis, Ethylene glycol, salicylates. Variations include mud pilers with an A for abdomyolysis. Mud pails with the A representing alcoholic ketosidosis. However, these are outdated and include low yield items that are no longer in use. Historically, the P in these mnemonics stood for paraldehyde. As paraldehyde is no longer used medically, the P often refers to propylene glycol. Additionally, Three new organic anion gap generating acids and acid precursors have been recognized since the initial acronym was created. Delactic acidosis occurs in patients with short bowel syndromes. 5-oxoproline, or pyrogalatamic acid, is associated with chronic astaminophen use by malnourished women. And propylene glycol and fusions, often used as the solvent for several parenteral medications including lorazepam, phenobarbital, and others is metabolized to D-lactate and L-lactate. These changes and additions required an update to the mnemonic. Thus, gold mark has been suggested for use by nephrologists in the 21st century. This acronym represents glycols, ethylene glycol and propylene glycol, oxoproline, L-lactate, D-lactate, methanol, aspirin, renal failure, and ketosidosis. Finally, Another mnemonic cute dimples include cyanide, toluene, and a second D e for ethanol, alcoholic ketosidosis, cyanide, uremia, toluene, ethanol, diabetic ketosidosis, isoniazid, methanol, propylene glycol, lactic acidosis, ethylene glycol, salicylates. Perhaps the easiest mnemonic is KULT, ketones, uremia, lactate and toxins, because these are the most common causes of a high anion gap metabolic acidosis, HAGMA. The mnemonic for the, rare, in comparison, toxins is ACEGIFTs, aspirin, cyanide, ethanolic ketosis, glycols, ethylene and propylene, isoniazid, ferric iron, toluene. Normal anion gap In patients with a normal anion gap the drop in HCO3 is the primary pathology.
since there is only one other major buffering anion, it must be compensated for almost completely by an increase in Cl. This is therefore also known as hypochloremic acidosis. The HCO3 lost is replaced by a chloride anion, and thus there is a normal anion gap. Gastrointestinal loss of HCO3. That is, diarrhea, note, vomiting causes hypochloremic alkalosis, renal loss of HCO3. That is, proximal renal tubular acidosis, RTA, also known as type 2 RTA, renal dysfunction, that is, distal renal tubular acidosis also known as type 1 RTA, renal hypoaldosterone, that is, renal tubular acidosis also known as type 4 RTA, characterized by elevated serum potassium, ingestions, ammonium chloride and acetazolamide, iphosphamide, hyperalimentation fluids, that is total parenteral nutrition, ammonium chloride and acetazolamide, iphosphamide, hyperalimentation fluids, that is total parenteral nutrition, some cases of ketosidosis, particularly during rehydration with NAR plus containing four solutions, alcohol, such as ethanol, can cause a high anion gap acidosis in some patients, but a mixed picture in others due to concurrent metabolic alkalosis, mineral locoticoid deficiency, Addison's disease. Note, a useful mnemonic to remember this is fused cars, fistula, pancreatic, ureteroenterostomy, saline administration, endocrine, hyperparathyroidism, diarrhea, carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, acetazolamide, ammonium chloride, renal tubular acidosis, spironolactone. Low anion gap A low anion gap is frequently caused by hypoalbuminemia. Albumin is a negatively charged protein and its loss from the serum results in the retention of other negatively charged ions such as chloride and bicarbonate. As bicarbonate and chloride anions are used to calculate the anion gap, there is a subsequent decrease in the gap. In hypoalbuminemia the anion gap is decreased from between 2.5 to 3 mL per 1 gram per deciliter decrease in serum albumin. Common conditions that reduce serum albumin in the clinical setting are hemorrhage, nephrotic syndrome, intestinal obstruction and liver cirrhosis. The anion gap is sometimes reduced in multiple myeloma, where there is an increase in plasma YGG, paraproteinemia. Corrections can be made for hypoalbuminemia to give an accurate anion gap. 